What's up guys, guys Lee back with another video. In this video I'm going to talk about two ways that I can make Mr. Axis Part 2 up here a little easier on you, or at least in my mind a little easier. Um, the reason I think that these two ways are going to help you, um, I've played in tons of groups now uh, in this raid and I have tried multiple different strategies with them and I've found two ways that have allowed the groups that I have been in that have succeeded to succeed and it kind of clarifies things so here's the two sections people always have questions in and these are the and then I'll tell you the two things that help those situations first one who's throwing and who's grabbing cannon second one what do I do when there's a double empowerment what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explain to you what people I see are doing and why you shouldn't and then I'm going to explain what you should do and give you a hypothetical situation involving, you know, him moving around so that I can maybe help you or those of you who visually have to see it, maybe understand it better. All right. So the first one, who grabs cannon and who grabs the bombs or the orbs, whatever you want to call them. Normally people want to say, well, whoever's empowered should uh, not grab the cannon, right? My issue with this is I find people, since you're not giving people certain jobs, you're kind of leaving things out in the air, depending on what happens with the raid, people get confused. People accidentally pick up the cannon. People will sit there and not pick up a cannon because they think they're not supposed to pick up a cannon. Or the empowered person does stay there and, not, and, and only wants to throw, but the other person doesn't realize that because they've forgotten and they don't go pick up the cannon. Or, and this is the biggest one, one person dies and it throws everything out of whack. Oh my goodness, it just messes everybody up. People freak out. What What's that thing the Joker said on Batman? You know, you do, you do one little whatever and people just, they go insane or whatever. That's pretty much what happens. It's just utter chaos because people can't remember, oh, well, who's this? Who's empowered? Who's what? They're looking around. They're trying to find people. People way over there. People way over there. What's everybody doing? Who's supposed to grab? Who's to get in the orb? Who's doing all this? And people just get confused and they die every time, every single time. Stop listening. What? Cortana, stop listening. Whatever. Okay. All right. Now. Here's the solution to this. Hopefully this will make this easier. I'm so, I apologize for her interrupting. I'll have to get on to her later. Um, the solution is one person, left, middle, right, one person grabs the cannon every single time. That same person is all-time cannon grabber. Now, your boy right here, God's Leap, I am always a cannon grabber. I love grabbing the cannon. Grabbing the cannon is so fun. I hate throwing. Throwing is so boring. So I'm a cannon grabber. If you're a cannon grabber and you're empowered, it's okay. All you got to do is get back. All you got to do is get back. Now, if you're on left or right, actually, you can shoot all the servitors without having to move and without missing if you just do it right. And I'll explain that um, in a minute. But um, the only people that have to really go somewhere else to shoot all the servitors is whoever's in the middle empowered. So now let me give you the hypothetical situation to this so I can better explain it. And I'll do it for the middle just because, you know, you can't shoot all the servitors from right here. So, me, I become empowered, right? I'm going out here. I'm picking up the cannon. I'm killing my boy right here, picking up cannon. Boom, I'm popping right up here. And as I'm popping up here, I'm calling out whatever just come out right there. Now, this means there's a cannon person over there and two cannon people over here. And we still got a thrower over there, thrower over there, thrower over there. Now, I'm empowered. Some of you might be saying, well, God's lead. You got to go back to middle. You got to get the empowered. Yes, I am. After I kill a few servitors, I'm going to kill at least three servitors. And once I kill about three servitors, I'm just going to hop right back down here. And I'm in my spot. I'm good to go. I'm ready. Now, some of you might be like, well, what if you kill three servitors and you need more? Well, you shouldn't need more, but say you do. What I like to do is I like to watch his, uh, his shield. Once his shield gets down to about two throws left, and if you've played this enough, you'll know exactly what that looks like. It's about, you know... A little if there's a little sliver left it's just one but if there's about you know like 20% then it's, it's two throws or so a little bit over 20% once I see about two throws left I'm either gonna be hitting one of the servitors and jumping back down or I'm gonna be you know seeing two other people with orbs already and getting ready now one easy one way to make this even easier on the person with the cannon that's empowered um, if you just hold that last one for a minute 
not a whole minute, but I'm saying like if he's not doing his thing where he lifts his arm in the air and he's going to kill all of you and you've got a second, just hold that last throw so people can get into place. That's what you've got to do for Axis Challenge anyway, so might as well go ahead and get used to it. So say I'm standing over here, I'm in power middle and i got to get back. There's one throw left. Let the person in the middle be the thrower. The rule that I like to follow is two throw on the left, two throw on the right, three in the middle. If you got three throw in the middle, the person in the middle is always going to have the last one, and you're always they're always going to call out, hey, I've got the last one, everybody get in your spots. And then I'm just going to jump right back down here. So that's number one. Have a designated cannon grabber and thrower at each side, and whether you're empowered or not, if you're a cannon grabber, grab the cannon and make sure you get back to your spot in time. And then, of course, also if you're in the middle and you got that third ball and it's the last one to throw, then boom, there you go. And you've got some more time you know, for everybody to get in their spot and everybody to get ready. It just makes it so much easier. No one has to think who's grabbing a cannon, who's killing this, who's doing this, who's everywhere, where's everybody at? And if, say, a warlock and, you know, I'm a, I'm a hunter. Say a warlock and a hunter is in the middle, and a lot of people are pretty squishy when they're on the hunter. Me, I can just, you know, go. I can just easy, invis, run down here, smash him with the sword. No problem. I never die. Don't worry about it. As long as the person in the middle with me shooting ads. Ads can kill you so quick. But having a warlock in the middle is good just because they can revive or a titan. They can drop a bubble down there. Anything like that is great. But just having those few little things come together is, is successful. It works every time for groups that I've been in. Now, here's the second thing. Second big question. What happens when there's a double in power? Here's what I see people do. Say, all right, so two people get empowered, right? And one of two things occurs. They either don't kill the, the captain before they switch, or they do kill the captain and then switch. And I'll explain why both of those end up messing up. So, two people get empowered. One of them hears, okay, we need somebody on the right. Say there's double empower on the left. We're here in the middle with empowered, I'm empowered. And we need somebody on the right. Well, left's over here like, all right, I'm switching. Somebody switch with me. Well, then there's captains sitting out forever shooting at people when you could have just went and killed them and then worried about all that. But instead, now you've got one person over here on the left trying to kill a captain and he dies, probably. That's mostly what happens in groups I'm in. And you got three people over here killing the captain easy and nobody ever switches. Or people, random people switch for whatever reason. I, like, I've seen people, everything's fine and people just switch for some reason because the thought of it's even there. Um, or they kill the captain... And then the person with the cannon moves to the side that they need to go to, and the other person moves as well. And then there's nobody over here. Oh, man. It happens so much, it's actually laughable. Um, now I'm going to tell you how to fix that. It's actually quite easy. Whenever there's a double empowerment, only one person moves out of the whole place. So let me give you an example. Double empower like we just said on the left. No empowerment over here. I'm empowered in middle, right? Here's what's going to happen. Whoever the cannon grabber is on the left, or any side that needs to move, whoever the cannon grabber is, you're going to be the person that moves. So, whoever the cannon grabber is over here, they are going to locate their self over here somewhere on the right, either right away, after the captain is killed and they've got their cannon, so, because you can, because you can easily, from right up here, shoot the servitor here, shoot the servitor there, and shoot the servitor there. No problem. You can either relocate immediately, or when you see him at about, you know, two balls left before he throws, wait till then and then move over. And then there's also if someone in the middle is holding the last ball till the last minute so that everybody can get in their spots, that makes it easier too. But when you do it like that, people aren't worried as much about where should I be. If they're, and everybody needs to have an assigned s switcher. And you know what the great part about that is? The assigned switcher is the cannon grabber. It makes perfect sense because you've got to move. So if I'm in middle and I get double empowerment with my buddy, whoever's in the middle of me, I'm the one that's going to be moving because I've got the cannon. That other person never has to move. Nobody else has to move. Yes, there's going to be three people on one of the sides. Whichever side needs the empowerment, there's going to be three people there. Whichever side had the double empowerment, there's going to be one person left there because they got to throw. But that way you don't have any random people moving random positions for whatever reason. Now, that's my two reasons that I are two, I guess, uh, ways that you can make Axis Part 2 a little easier. 
I hope that this has been educational. I hope that it is helpful. And I hope that you can, you know, maybe explain this to some people out there who don't know about it. And maybe they'll take it and try it out. And maybe it'll work. Um, some people are stubborn. Some people don't listen to other people because they're know-it-alls. That happens. If you run into that case, please leave that group. There's hundreds of other groups. There's always other groups you can join. Uh, I'll have a video here at the end about how to find a fire team anytime, anywhere. Set up games and all that fun stuff. Uh, maybe along the way you can find some friends you can trust to, you know, they can do their part. The one thing I like about my group is I can trust them to do their part. Now, things happen every time. Things mess up. But for the most part, I can trust that everybody in my crew on Tuesday night is going to be doing whatever they need to do to make us successful. And we're good about explaining things to each other and, and making sure we're doing things in the best possible way. So I hope this has been helpful. Make sure you like the video, guys, so we can get it out there and people see it. Share the video if you really did enjoy it. Share it with a friend if you got somebody who needs to know this. Um, subscribe if you're not subscribed so you can see all my latest content, tutorials, uh, videos that I have come up. But I really do hope these two ways have helped you. If not, please let me know in the comments so I can explain better. And let me know, have you seen these same issues in your games? Have you run into the same problem I have? I would really like to know that because in for me at least it happens a lot with me. This may not be true of everyone that plays Destiny. So it's just good to know. But thank you guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I just came up on a year of YouTube. I uh, posted a picture on Twitter. Follow me on, the, on Twitter and you can see it. Uh, we went from three subscribers to 700. We went from, I think, 39 views to 123,000 or something like that. So it's been a lot of fun. I appreciate y'all watching. I hope this is helpful, and I will see you in the next video.